Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode two of A Rimworld of Magic. I'm Iken, and this is the first episode I record on Rimworld 1.2. So, welcome to the new patch. I'm going to talk a little bit about what has changed in this patch during the beginning of this video, and apart from that, the main... Um, the main thing that's happening today is going to be the fortification of this little settlement these three vagabonds have founded in the last episode because it's a nice place let's see if we can survive here and if you're new to the series check out my channel you'll find a lot of similar content lots of rimworld strategy based gaming if you find anything there you like leave a subscription and you won't miss any future things so we're quite good here food wise but I'm quite concerned with all those cheetahs and uh, other predators running around. So I'm going to be very, very careful around here. So patch 1.2, mainly a content expansion. Overall, I would sum it up as a content expansion. We get more sidecasts, more different ones. We get more items. We get new quests. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, well, it feels like Tynan is now uh, evolving his own uh, royalty mod on his uh, on his own now, and uh, this way 1.2 is uh, more of an expansion there, and it also reflects on how modding was impacted by it. Almost all the mods are still working out fine, so that's just uh, quite nice. So with this door, I'm going to leave it open for now, because if we need to run into some sort of cover, I don't want to be waiting for on that sandstone door. And it's quite easy to close it if uh, the need arises. I'm still sitting on that uh, um, wind turbine, which doesn't work. But apart from that, I feel like one of the most important uh, things to strive for now is some privacy for everybody of these three. Because I think after all that has happened, it would be really good if this episode would end with a room for everybody on his own. Because, I don't know, I feel like that... Uh, that makes a lot about, that defines a lot about settling in somewhere, don't you think? Having your own room, your own little domain. I certainly think that would be something these uh, three would uh, like to have. So we're going to um, go for that. I'm just keeping a, uh, a high, um, A high attention on these cheetahs. Just uh, looking on that fish and mouse. So that's uh, what a fish and mouse does. You kill one, three new spawn. It's an a very very odd animal, and uh, this only happens if you let them live long enough. Like if I would now shoot all three of them, they would just end. If we let uh, all three of them uh, roam for a while, they're becoming nine next time. It's uh, an interesting way of. Uh, doing livestock as well. I never worked with it, but I I thought several times about it, how uh, funny it could be. So, expect to see that on one of my series at some point. I'd, I think I'm going to do something with that. Um, apart from that, this room now is done, and that's going to be my freezer zone in the future. But for now, this is just the um, food storage, because I like to... Uh, have these things under different uh, under different roofs. Sorting my uh, storage areas is a private passion of mine. I admit it. So let's uh, think about steel. I, I need some steel. I want to put down some geothermal generator or something like that because right now I, I feel like pretty crippled. And also I want to have some research, but that will come together once the uh, rooms for everybody are available. So my lack of weapons really makes me a 
tiny little bit nervous. Like, that uh, assault rifle is nice and dandy, but uh, there's no wind and uh, we're blocked by a Seguaro cactus. We're, we're, we're seriously blocked here in the shrubland. Let's change that. It uh, didn't change too much about the lousy output anyways, but every little bit helps, you know? So there we go. I really would like to get rid of these predators here somehow. So pretty efficient way to uh, get something done here are the uh, good old cheap spike traps. They are quite a quite a good thing. The AI of the enemies is uh, working around these quite badly and pretty much everything that will come from this angle will trigger um, this and uh, the other way around too. I don't know why, but they're just like that. Don't want to mutter about that. So um, how's the chunk count, how's the block count? <sighs> Looking good. I think with the amount of sandstone blocks available, I should have no problem um, getting the rest of these rooms done. So for some mining ops, I would um, need to leave the colony anyways. So, ooh, nervous. Certainly makes me a little bit nervous. I'm going to look for some spaceship chunks because uh, that's uh, an easy way to get some steel then again I need 340 in that never mind I need a serious vein here can't uh, do that with just some some ship parts because you only get 30 units of steel out of a ship part ship part um, so no not really um, What's hanging around here? Oh, just a lion. Oh, bah. Oh, come on. Two lions lingering around, just waiting for somebody to uh, step outside and uh, ask him to get eaten. Damn. That's quite hard, because uh, out here, well, I think that lion down here is uh, not too hungry. But uh, I'll rather be careful with that. So let's uh, carefully, carefully uh, mine around here. I mean, mining jobs will be done by Dennis anyways, so he's the best armed guy in the town. So, well, only problem I'm seeing is, yeah, well, okay, there's, there's a zebra on the colony. But who's handling that? Nobody should change that. No handling with a self-tamed zebra? No, no. I just forgot that the zebra was around because that uh, th that animal joined us uh, in the last few seconds of the, la of the last episode. So we're getting some weapons here. Interesting, but they are quite bad. A hammer is a tool. Pretty good for construction overall, but I already have a wrench, so I don't know what to think about that. I just know that I need to get that steel, and uh, I need to get it even though a lion is lying there. So that's your average average day problem when you're playing in the average shrubland. The ambushed praetor. So, there's a thing that I was uh, thinking about in this series, so I consider these Empire people as, well, as something, as they were, were displayed now more and more across the patches as some sort of uh, theocratic society, and I think these three guys, the last thing they want is to work together with some kind of uh, weird space church so we're going to bend this um they're magically gifted they don't want psychasts they're going for the real deal you know 
and um, that's why in this run I can't imagine that any of these three people would uh, seriously um, give home to one of these pampered uh, people from the higher ranks there so I mean Connor would be uh, like the most probable recipient but uh, as I, I consider him as somebody who's still inf influenced by his uh, childhood as a cult child he, he I, I think he liked his childhood okay and uh, well Yana I think she's a, a pretty uh, disillusioned person and uh, she has other things on her mind like a constant craving for drugs if uh, if I get to the point where I can have the mana drugs I know who I'm going to allow to have a big one there so let's uh, monitor Dennis in the meantime he just uh, arrived there there's one thing that's uh, keeping me comforted, but that's um, there's small game around here. Usually, these wild animals go for um, the easiest game first, and uh, yeah, I just heard how a rat died, and uh, human is not the easiest game around, luckily. So I think we're safe for the time being. But once that bunny is down, I don't know. What's more dangerous, the donkey or the human for that lion? I would say, ask the lion, not me. So, that thing seriously took a battle with a chameleon yak. It would be a good moment to just uh, strike back, honestly. But I don't have any real guns. So, I'm considering more and more building some archaic weaponry aka bows because I have the wood and we need the guns obviously because that's making me freaking nervous and you don't want to go melee with a lion or a cheetah who would want that no sane person would want that so maybe we go bows that would make somehow sense to me all right so At least the wild animals are sleeping tonight because they're they have feasted well. All right, um, back at the base, the first two rooms, private quarters are done, and I think if we would ask Yana, she would be very very confident that these rooms would be getting done by the end of the day. If somebody would kindly haul her a new, a new sandstone block. So, I'd say, let's make that happen. Because it would be a shame if uh, the last room wouldn't get finished. Only because I was uh, short of... Oh, never mind. I have all the blocks I need. Awesome. I somehow saw the wrong line there. Okay. Oh, I want to put the bed in there. This looks like a, a natural alcove there. Um, the only thing lacking now on my design are some power circuits to top it off. Nice. Okay. Um, nah, this uh, looks this looks weird to me. So, uh, she now has that bed on her. <laughs> Funny. I just uh catched that one particular moment <laughs> all right gonna uh, replace that bad one day though because uh, who wants a poor bad in the long run if they can't have bad a uh, can have a better quality one that's right nobody but the most important thing for now is uh, hauling together the proper amount of steel to set up a geothermal generator set it up and fortify it i'd say it's my top priority now because uh we might be striving for magic but we won't be doing anything without power and the really bad thing about my about this world is science is completely random so the outcome of my scientific work I can't tell what's going to be up the plate and because I'm right now only having the choice between wind and wood 
and geothermal. I unlocked that alongside with the beginning technologies because I felt like, come on, we're in the 56th century, can't have geothermal right away. And with random technology, I think it's very, very uh, dangerous to delay these crucial technologies and would only have ended up with less fun in the game overall. So that's my decisions behind that. Um, we're going to build some nice cooler here too, but no, uh, yes, yes, it's worth the steal. It's um, basically a, uh, a quite life-saving investment. If we get a hard heat wave into the um, area, you're pretty, you're pretty sad if you don't have any uh, air conditioning by the time then just have to uh, live with the fact that there's a vicious predator right next to me but there's still bunny for one day and uh, I don't know for today I feel like I want to I want to set the score with this friggin lion come on we're going to do this I don't feel well with this uh, wild thing in front of my base and right now the lion is already injured um, he's right in front of um, a situation with a turret. So uh, there we go with the uh, revenge. Let's uh, let's uh, okay. That's not good. Um, I'll have. To, I, I hope that Dennis will be. Wow. Not even nimble, but good lord, what a lucky guy. Not even a scratch. I'd say this guy is a natural born fighter. It's good he has the gun. He definitely deserves the gun, if you ask me. So, um, there's lion on the on the platter tonight. Yum. Okay. Um, who's the chef, anyways? That's Connor. Okay. So now I can sleep a little bit more, um, more reassured that this area here is, uh, or I am a little bit more reassured that this area is. Uh, quite safe-ish for the time being. This down here is just uh, very dangerous. I would really love to get rid of that lion, but well, tomorrow. Once the rabbit's dead, I'm going to consider um, evacuate, uh, um, not evacuation, the killing of that lion, because it's just so dangerous. Well, we'll see. So, Dennis is getting uh, used to the life on this planet. He might have been a little bit, uh, well, ill-prepared for this job with this uh, young age, but, well, certainly gotta say he's mining quicker than last episode. <laughs> oh my god, this colony has no table. Let's change that. Um... It's uh, very uncivilized. It's, uh, having no tables is making everybody very, very sad. Keep that in your mind. <laughs> so, uh, just like I have expected, the bunny is gone. There is no more bunny, but there's also no more hungry lion. So, that's that. I now have a running um, air, cool, air conditioning unit here. That's uh, another good thing that has happened today. But yeah, I gotta get rid of that lion somehow. I don't have a clue how. <laughs> I really don't have any clue how. It's a little bit, uh, I mean, it's not entirely true. I could just send Yana and Connor face tank that beast, but you don't want to face tank lions. You just don't. But at the same time, I think it's the it's the safer approach, because not doing anything, that's the real deadly part. So the fish and mice are keeping this cheetah at least busy. <laughs> that's kind of a relief. So something tell something deep down inside tells me that uh, the lion will prefer the donkey still. Maybe that's just a wrong hope. But well, 
I'm going to keep uh, an eye, eye out for that lion here today. Because I think that's the most important part. <laughs> the rest of the work will just get along quite nicely. I just gotta keep an eye out for that lion. Or just get rid of it. Yeah, come on. Let's, uh, let's do this. The trick behind it is just uh, to have somebody else drawing the attention of the lion on himself and giving Dennis the free field, uh, the free uh, line of fire to work with. And this is a very dangerous uh, game though because uh, a lion comes up with uh, a pretty high damage and uh, well, there's bleeding damage for sure, they go really quickly into revenge there's a lot of uh, reasons why you don't want to fight with a lion, and they're quite quick. So I just hope that uh, Dennis is going to be able to land a few more volleys, but uh, usually this is a, sort of a safe maneuver, as you can see. But, well, I think a controlled risk, a, a calculated uh, risk, is better than waiting for the moment that this thing is getting hungry and has some interest in eating up some of my people here. So if I hold open that door, they really prefer that opening above anything else. Amazing. So I'm going to stop that order now. I know that entering and leaving through stone doors is a slow process, but uh, th stone, doors, stone doors don't burn and well, there be dragons, they said. So I want stone doors. And out of a roleplay decision, I wouldn't fortify a stone fortification with a wooden door. I mean, sure, you could do that, but the room world wood is quite unrealistic compared to real life wood. Because if you go for a real fortified heavy oaken door, well, Fire doesn't really cut it, but in Rim World, everything seems to be made out of straw if it's flammable and uh, it just goes poof. And that's why I don't go for wood, because no sane per person would do that. So Connor and Dennis are uh, going for some mining ops today. So they're talking about sweet foods and uh, the old earth and games. So I guess there starts to uh, grow a certain feeling of uh, of normalcy here for them, for them three. Like we're, we're doing the same things every few days. We're foraging this patch, mining this uh, steel vein. We're going on hunts together. Like these, uh, these three are in the midst of a strong bonding process. If you would go, if this would be a, a team building, uh, <laughs> A team building effort they would be on a very very good way <laughs> jokes aside um, let's see how much steel we hauled home yay that's enough for the geothermal awesome so which steam hole will I uh, tap into like this one is looking good but this one is looking even better but to access this I'm going to get rid of the cheetah and uh, oh boy, those those things are even worse than lions because they're just uh, quicker. I mean, their speed is a famous uh, aspect of these animals. So this is uh, I feel like this morning we're we're pretty uh, we're pretty. There's a tension in the in the air because we're going to hunt the cheetah today. Because if we don't. There's no access to geothermal power for this place for the time being. So we're going to use the same strategy, but I think this time we're not going to get away without bleeding. So let's uh, just hope that we're not losing any limbs or such <coughs> or suffer any uh, long term um, wounds or maimings or such all right so let's go dennis oh that's always good the first bullet hit without a revenge tr without triggering a revenge um 
Okay, that thing lost a lot of its eyesight. <laughs> That's uh, one funny thing about RimWorld. The detail level is sky high, you know. Ah, death in six hours. We, we got in a good volley. I gotta say, Dennis' experience from his uh, old homeworld, he might have no passion for shooting, but being that good at it at least earned him the gratitude of his friends here, I'm pretty sure of that. Connor and Yana are certainly... If I would uh, be in their shoes, I'd be super happy that this guy with his uh, assault rifle is tackling down the cougar uh, or the, the cheetah without um, triggering the, the attack, so... They were ready to risk their lives for this hunt. And turned out there was uh, no risk to be taken in the first place. It's always a good feeling, I'd say. All right, so let's uh, drop down the geothermal and a little bit of walling around because I don't want to invite any raiders to uh, destroy this place. That would be a pity. So let's put in a steel door and I need conduits. All right, let's go for these and I'm going to connect it with all of this, but also over this. I don't want to rely on only one connection here. That, uh, it's never good. Especially since this connection is running over a building. What would happen if this thing would get destroyed? The whole po um, colony would, uh, would be out of power because of that. And uh, that would be a shame. So the, the Wild Coalition by this day um, cleared the, their home patch of all the predators here. Successfully with just one rifle, a wrench and the club. So I think... Yana and Connor are quite happy that for today they're not going to go anywhere <laughs> close to wild cats. So, there we go. I'm really uh, afraid of wild cats of this caliber because honestly, a cheetah can easily kill a single colonist in no time. The worst thing about these uh, guys is they want to eat everything they kill. So once they down somebody, they start munching. And that's the moment when you can start to lose limbs e easily. That's uh, super annoying to deal with because uh, I, I forgot to show you the move speed of these guys, but it's, uh, it's sky high. <laughs> it's hard to outrun those guys. And if you don't have any uh, people around you, a cheetah can easily rip down one of your people. So. If you're ever around this biome, and I think I'm not even sure if these are vanilla or vanilla expanded, but whatever might be the case, take them seriously. They're very, very dangerous. So once the generator is done, everybody in the uh, little four in the little four here will be um, looking forward to this uh, to this day because that's the day of electric light everywhere, because. We don't need to uh, be careful with power anymore. We're spending power for for just some luxury things. So I'm pretty low on wood. Just realized that, and I'm going to uh, chop some wood outside here. I mean, this is uh, pretty much a a lush and uh, vibrant meadow of wood. In the arid shrubland, amazing. Um, this place is uh, quite fertile for an arid shrubland tile, honestly. So these come usually a lot less uh, um, inviting. But this one, there's food everywhere. We got uh, we got lots of wood growing. I'm used to a lot uh, br more brutal uh, environments. So um, we're running closer to the end of this episode and I'm going to run down a little bit of a, of a details of uh, RimWorld 1.2 if you didn't re read the patch notes as of yet. Um, we're going to get some new sidecasts, really cool uh, word of uh, something sidecasts. 
um, persona weapons are getting traits and that uh, really makes them unique like they they modify uh, they get different stats modified by their personality I'm really looking forward to that and uh, besides that like I, I already said that new quests um, showing up overall I was uh, surprised how um, how excitingly unexciting this uh, update is um, I don't want to sound bad about it no that's not the right wording um, what I'm meaning is like it fits so well into the rest of the uh, existing content that I think a lot of people won't even notice that it's new that's a good thing I mean we're we're seeing here a uh, straight up nice continuation of design and I like that so um, oh there's a mad zebra and Ah, uh, no, I friggin, ah, uh, at least I got a, uh, a salvo in that damn beast. So, yeah, well, it's those situations where you just, uh, should stand and fight and hope that he's, uh, going to tackle down that zebra before, uh, the others arrive. If not, the others will take care of the zebra and haul Dennis back home. But let's see. Boy, Dennis is... Wow. So, we keep underestimating the firepower or the fighting power of this uh, young man steeled in this uh, destroyed world. Gotta say, he, uh, he gets some lucky rolls there. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting definitely some lucky rolls there. I mean, this guy only got one kick in the torso of that thing. So, he basically noticed... So, if I would imagine that as a real-life action thing, he would uh, notice the, the noises of the mad zebra running around here, getting outside the cave where he was mining, chucking out his rifle, pumping in a salvo of that thing, and using his gun to finish off the beast. Wow. He's a hero. Seriously. I'm going to uh, give this good man some armor and uh, a proper a proper gear in the future because he he showed off his prowess the surface several times, really. I'm, I'm, I'm not often that I'm, I'm impressed by how lucky some colonists can get. But, well, let's, uh, let's turn it into some story, I'd say. Alright, so I'm going to stop mining down here because uh, for the time being I feel like I'm having enough steel. I want to have uh, other projects focused next and that's um, stone production and um, some luxury inside this area. So because it's nice that everybody had its own room at the end of the day but I think like, come on, a little end table with a light for everybody here. That's the least we can do. I feel like everybody should have some dresser at the end of the day, too. But we're going to make those dressers out of stone. Um, because that's a material which is available in abundance here. So we're going to make our first... Uh, things out of lurzolite in the future too. So I'm going to use lurzolite a lot for the flooring and for the furniture. It has a lovely vibrant green tone and um, well I'm, I'm I'm totally a, a addicted to colors so don't judge me. That's why I run all these uh, crazy material mods which just uh, add differently colored things into the game because I just love to build my colonies which with uh, differently colored things but um, I, I strongly dislike it if I can select my colors for free. That's the most amazing part. There are some mods which are allowing you to dye clothing for example. Most boring thing of the world. If it's not random it's not good. I don't know. I'm just wired like that. Alright so well there's still so much work to do. I think there the next very important thing will be a, another room to live in here. So that's going to be a very big room. Maybe a double room. I don't know yet. 
but it's time to uh, get some extra room available because it's always good to have at least one or two extra rooms that uh, they don't even have to serve any purpose because it's always nice if you have some area available which you can uh, use for uh, for some uh, suddenly appearing projects. Alright, so we're also able to build new coolers. Awesome. That's so nice. So I would say at the end of episode 2 the uh, the three of them are feeling like this place is now their new home. They they fought here, they conquered this place, and this is uh, oh man, they're even having their own power generator here. I think once you have a fortification, a power generator, and uh, such things, you're trying to own the place. And uh, now the next things are to think about how to work around with the neighbors. New Fortune is uh, a very good situated place to trade with a lot of people so the, the gain there would be a one faction that would be very close to me but they're hostile at the time here now the Hinthidio though they are neutral already I consider these guys as the uh, as two factions of I don't know independent spacefaring uh, entrepreneurs like two different political flows or such like the one of them is uh, friendly towards outlaws like us and the other one just uh, despises people like us democrats and republicans if you want to say so so with these people here i consider them uh natives that just live around here and um well there's one thing that i can wrap my head around um, what's the uh, Rim World of Magic factions there? So maybe it's uh, indigenic people and uh, more evolved natives. I think that would be a proper thing. So let's consider these people indigenics and these people more like a, a fantasy civilization type. It's hard to tell which kind of technology level a, a fantasy civilization truly has. They, the authors, more often than not, end up with some weird mishmash that uh, is a crossover of actual medieval times and renaissance and even sometimes modern times with certain um, inventions like sewers, for example. Sewers were really not a thing for a long time in wide parts of the earth, but yet in fantasy worlds nobody likes streets full of garbage, so sewers are a little bit more omnipresent here. I mean, I could have modded uh, feces into the game, but I played once with Dub's Bad Hygiene mod and I don't know. It, it was cool for one time, I still love the, the the safe game that that's running it but not because of the mod I don't know felt more tedious than anything else but let's stop rambling here it was nice to ramble for a moment but um, waiting here just for that door to get done but we're we're getting there so Dennis plant plant skill is just uh, horrible and he doesn't like it at all he liked the work in the mine shaft a lot more well Considering how well he fights, I think uh, hacking away at a wall and uh, killing something, maybe, maybe he has a lot of anger in himself. He would make a fine death knight. <laughs> Let's see what kind of class they'll get in the future. I'm so excited about that. Still a long way to go, sadly, but we're going to get there. Um, also, it's time to put an end to this episode, sadly. It's so much fun playing this, but almost 40 minutes in. That's enough for one. So, thanks for watching. If you're still hanging around here, I'm appreciating your time here a lot. And I would appreciate if you could leave a like on this video, because that would help 
that uh, Google knows that we're also here quite interesting and such. And oh, so um, we're having here um, some bugs that, uh, well, the mods have been, haven't been completely updated with the version 1.2, but I expected something like that. Anyways, my friends, thanks for uh, watching this. Hope you're going to tune in for the next episode. And until then, stay awesome and have a nice time. Goodbye.